Hello, geography students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have your notes for Chapter 17, Section 2, Turkey. We're going to talk a little bit about the history. Turkey has a very diverse cultural history. Some 8,000 years ago, the ancient city of uh, Ketel Hayuk uh, was the site of one of the world's first and oldest farming villages. With a population of around 5,000 to 6,000 people uh, living in more than 1,000 houses. Now, today you might think 5,000, 6,000 people, that's not a lot. Uh, considering that it took thousands of years to get a city to reach a population of at least 1 million, uh, 5,000, that's, that's kind of a big city. Uh, probably one of the biggest cities of the world at that period of the time. And number two, the first empire to invade this area were the Romans, and the Romans were able to capture the city of Byzantium. They renamed it Constantinople after Roman Emperor Constantine. In time, Constantinople would become the capital of the Byzantine Empire or the Eastern Roman Empire, and it had a lot of things going for it. Matter of fact, it was kind of considered to be the new Rome uh, at the time. At the time that uh, Constant Constantinople kind of came into being, uh, Rome was kind of falling apart. So there was a lot of hope in the city. Uh, matter of fact, you can see kind of a, a Circus Maximus below, uh, which is this area right here. This is literally um, kind of the what I would call the ancient Roman world equivalent of NASCAR. This is where you would have chariot races and such. Um, off to the left here, this is actually a photograph of Cattle Hoyuk, uh, which is our ancient city that we've been mentioning. All right, and number three, the Seljuk Turks invaded uh, this region somewhere around the early 1000s. And eventually the Ottoman Turks invaded this area around 1453. Uh, when the Ottoman Turks captured the city of Constantinople, roughly around 1453, they renamed it Istanbul. And it made it their capital, and it became the capital of the Islamic Empire. After World War I, though, the Ottoman Turks were defeated, and they lost much of their territory uh, because of the side that they took in the war. They sided with Germany and Austria-Hungary. Uh, a man named Mustafa Kemal, who you see pictured down in the bottom right-hand corner, him and his followers took over the government of Turkey in the 1920s, and he adopted a new name. He became known as Kemal Ataturk, which means the father of the Turks, and he eventually moved the capital to a place called Ankara. And he went in uh, to Turkey and he modernized the city. He actually uh, established a democracy, and it's one of the longest standing democracies in the Middle East. Uh, he uh, basically kind of uh, made, I guess you could say, Turkey a more secular country, not relying on Islam as much. And as a result, he was able to kind of uh, modernize and, in a way, westernize uh, his nation. Number five, although Turkey has historically been more Asian than European, its leaders are seeking to develop closer ties to Europe. Ataturk's government adopted Western methods, banned tez, which is a type of Turkish hat, and required men to wear European styles hats. Uh, down on the bottom left hand corner, you see a picture of Kemal Ataturk, and he's wearing a top hat. So that's kind of what we're talking about. He also urged women to stop wearing traditional veils. He uh, was basically trying to encourage women uh, to vote, uh, to work, to hold office. Uh, what I think is kind of interesting is Turkish women actually were able to vote well before American women were. Uh, he re or roughly about the same time, um, he replaced the Arabic alphabet with the Latin alphabet, and he adopted a metric system. Turkey's people are mostly ethnic Turks, and its culture is a mixture of modern and traditional. People speak Turkish, Arabic, Greek, and Kurdish, and over 75% of the population is urban. Kurds make up the largest minority group in Turkey, making up somewhere between 15 to 20% of the population. Uh, if you take a look at the map to the right, uh, the areas that are kind of in the, I guess you could say the orange or the pink here, are parts of 
um, where the Kurdish population is, uh, you'll note that there are Kurds that live in Turkey and Syria and Iraq and Iran. And in many of these areas, they first face a lot of persecution because of the fact that they're culturally different than the majority of the people that are in those other countries. Today, Turkey is a democratic nation seeking economic opportunities as a future member of the European Union. Turkey's largest city is Istanbul and its capital is Ankara. Turkey is a secular nation because religion is kept separate from the government, but that is starting to change as the Islamic political parties are attempting to increase Islam's role in Turkish society. A matter of fact, uh, pictured below is a, in the bottom right hand corner is a picture of the Hagia Sophia. Uh, for years it had been a museum. It had once been one of the world's biggest Christian churches uh, before the Muslims had taken over, the Ottoman Turks had taken over um, Constantinople. Then it was turned into a mosque. And uh, when Kemal Ataturk came to power, he turned it into a museum. In the last couple of years, it's been reinstated as a mosque. And a lot of people are concerned about um, the history that could be happening here. Number 11, Turkey's economy includes factories, craft making, and industries such as textiles and clothing, electronics and chemicals, cement and oil processing, and around 40% of the labor force works in agriculture, raising grains, cotton, sugar beets, and hazelnuts. And number 12, the natural resources found in Turkey are oil, coal, iron ore. Water is also a very valuable resource, and Turkey has spent billions of dollars building dams to increase its water supply and to provide hydroelectricity. The building of the dams has also caused some rifts between Turkey and its neighbors. Because of these dams, there's water reservoirs in Turkey, but water that would once been going down rivers, uh, such as Euphrates, isn't making it to places like Iraq, and it makes those nations a little upset. Thank you very much.